Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this video I'm going to answer some more questions that you send in to me via the YouTube channel and via my Instagram account. First up is a question from Taylor Embury. Taylor in fact asked a number of questions often pertaining to the structure of the workouts and how I organise them. As many of you will know who watch these videos regularly you'll pick up on the fact that I integrate a lot of the training elements into a particular workout. So I don't tend to put weights to one side for a one day and then plyometrics on another, speed work on another, etc. I tend to include elements of each more often than not in every training session that we do and that's throughout the whole training year. Taylor asks whether I specifically include certain exercises in the warm-up things like the line bounce, for example, plyometric movements, or do I save those for the actual meat of the workout? As I've indicated, I tend to include everything, more or less everything, that's relevant in our case to long and triple jump into the one workout. And the workouts follow a progression between units or various drills, conditioning elements, and technical elements. So why do I do that? Well, the idea is to make sure that we cover as many elements that are going to directly improve performance in that one workout. If you separate the elements sometimes you can get a mismatch between what you're trying to achieve. Also I like to break down the various parts of the long jump, triple jump and sprint actions techniques in order to develop a kind of jigsaw of all the parts that will go together to improve the actual event's performance. And this is done via the various units of drills in the sessions. So we'll often start with what I call a basic unit of drills, particularly in the build-up season, that's through the autumn into the winter time in the UK. By basic I mean exercises like marching, walking, running, backwards and forward lunges, hip swing movements, exercises that are relatively controlled and relatively static performed at walking pace for example so they're developing stabilization awareness of your body in space and coordinating some of the movements parts of the movements that are going to be involved in for example sprinting after that unit we then start to progress into more dynamic exercises and drills for example we may do a unit of skipping drills focusing on foot strike we may do some leg cycling or dribbles drills where you're working on keeping the toes up and stepping over the ankle or the knee. We may do scissor bounds, for example, as well in that particular unit. Each unit has a basic theme as well. So it could be sprint technique, it could be long jump takeoff, it could be reactivity, or it could be agility. We'll also do acceleration units, acceleration for sprint, working on low heel recovery, and acceleration for the long jump run up working on a more deliberate acceleration will also work specifically on the various stages in the run-up the first acceleration stage the first and second stage where the athlete comes from the acceleration up into alignment and we'll also add the attack phase on as well so again we're breaking down all the elements of the event into specific units of drills that are repeated throughout the training year another unit of drills and Taylor was referencing these in particular were plyometrics or rather are plyometrics. Now I'll include those jumping type of exercises throughout the training year again and often as I've said they're integrated into the training session. So you'll have seen on the channel a number of videos made on the value of plyometrics for long triple jump and sprinting. But again it's all about putting them into the training session so that you can do more of them across the training year and more varied amounts rather than just lumping them all into one session or two sessions a week we'll do three to four to five workouts combining or containing rather plyometric training. Taylor then asks about the number of repetitions and how many exercises we're doing in a particular session. Now it's quite difficult to get that across in a short video because one varies across the training year i.e. what we might do in October November will be greater and different to what we'll be doing at this time now which is middle of June coming up to the peak season in the UK. Secondly it will depend on the muscular actions involved as well and the proximity of competitions. 
I'll also consider each athlete individually where practical, where possible, and look at how they're doing in a particular workout. If I notice that their ground contacts are slowing when they're doing reactive depth jumps, for example, or they're not putting 100% effort into flying 20 meter sprints, for example, then I'll call it time on the workout because we don't want to condition an unnecessarily slower response. We need to work at the peak level of performance in order to get that transition and that transference into athletic, that actually event performance. I've said it quite a few times, but if you train too many times submaximally, even if you're unconsciously doing it, i.e. you're doing lots of plyometrics, hoping that you're gonna get more powerful, but what might be happening is you're not actually reacting to the ground as quickly as you should be or to the contact as quickly as possible. Therefore, you're potentially training yourself to react more slowly than what you would do if you did lesser reps and much more high quality reps. Therefore, rest and recovery between repetitions and between sessions is crucial in that you need to be fresh enough to put in full out effort with these plyometric exercises and with these flying 20 meter sprints, for example, and of course, long and triple jump technique work. If you're tired, then you're not gonna get that maximum return that I've been referring to. So for those of you looking for a deliberate take home message from this video, when it comes to the structure of sessions, you've got to analyze what you're training for, what are the key components of the event, and how many times a week do you need to do those? But ensuring that you're rested and recovered enough to do so. If you want to follow the structure of the types of workouts that I organize, then to reiterate, we start with a basic unit of drills and then we progress through various other units that are more dynamic, that cover all the elements required of the long triple jump and sprints. And these are repeated throughout the training year. The idea behind that is that you're adding speed onto speed onto speed, for example, nor are you losing sight of the technical requirements of the event. However, I'll do takeoff work, short approach, jumping, all the way basically from the day that we start training, meaning that it's much more integrated, there's a greater chance of the speed and power that you're developing channeling directly into your performance and improving that, stepping that performance up as the training year goes past and each training year goes on beyond that one. Taylor also talked about the types of muscular actions involved in the training sessions and I try to cover across the training week and across the training year all the actions that are relevant to developing long triple jump and sprint ability. So eccentric, plyometric and concentric and even isometric. Again, if you've been following my videos, I'm a firm believer in developing what's known as leg stiffness and greater reactivity, and also using eccentric exercises to do that. Most exercises performed, for example, in the weights room are concentric. That means the muscles shorten as they produce movement. So when you're squatting, for example. However, that's only part of the requirement of developing specific long jump strength, for example. In fact, you need greater plyometric stretch reflex ability. Concentric strength will give you a base, but it should never be seen as the be all and end all. You'll jump further by doing more plyometric training and more eccentric work than you will concentric strength work, all things being equal. Hopefully the answers that I've given to Taylor's questions and my general talk about how to structure workouts will assist you in your training and competitions. Do subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you've seen and do leave any questions or comments you may have in the section below or through my Instagram channel. And good luck with your training and competition. I've been asked a growing number of questions through the comment section on the YouTube channel and also via my Instagram and obviously I can only get around to answering a few of them. So if you want to find out more, perhaps go to my website where you'll find more information on the various topics raised through the questions and also through some of the articles that I write on sports fitness and track and field training 
through my work as a journalist. Also, you can check out athleticsweekly.com where you'll find a lot of performance training articles as well.